Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Anna and today we're we'll doing a library haul. Let's get going. I think I actually already did with the library haul, but I am doing two different videos for them. So does that make it up? <laughs> I don't know, but let's just get going. So my first book is A House with Good Bones by T. King Fisher. Mom seems off. Her brother's words echo in Sam's Montgomery's ear as she turns out onto the quiet North Carolina street where the mother lives alone. She brushes the thorn away as she climbs the front steps. Sam's excited for his rare extended visit and looking forward to a night with just the two of them, drinking box wine, watching murder mystery shows, and guessing who the killer is long before the characters figure it out. But stepping inside, she quickly realizes home isn't so what it used to be. God is the wind, God is the warm, cluttered charm her mom is known for. Now the walls are painted as still and white. Her mom jumps at the smallest noises and looks over her shoulder even when she's the only person in the room. And when Sam steps out back to clear her head, she finds a job she hidden beneath the magazine while the rose bushes and vultures are circling the garden from above. To find out what's got her mom so frightened in, in her own home, Sam will go digging for the truth, but some secrets are better left buried. That sounds devious. <laughs> My next book is Those Across the Lake by Christopher Burlingham. One, two, don't look at me, look at me. Three, four, who's that crouching at my door? Five, six, get your volume pick and six. Seven, eight, get you if you stay up late. Nine, ten, I will never get back home again. I actually got a mind. Good for them. <laughs> Haunted by memories of the Great War, failed academic Frank Nicholas and his wife and daughter have arrived in a sleeping Georgian town of White Bow, where Frank hopes to write a history of his family's old estate, the Samuel Yard Plantation, and the horrors that occurred there. At first, the great roller ways of their new neighbors seemed to be everything they wanted, but under the facade of summer social and small town charm, there is an unspoken dread that the town's folk have lived with for generations, a presence that demands sacrifice. Boom. My next one is The Bat Night in the Library by Emma Jodosik. One night locked in library, walk and go on. Man, I would love to be locked in the library. <laughs> one night, the on the night before graduation, seven students get in the basement of the university's rare books library. They're not allowed in the library after closing time, but it's the perfect place for the ritual they want to perform, the one borrowed from the Greeks, said to free those who take part in it from the fear of death, and what better time to seek the wisdom of ancient gods than, the, than in the hours before they were scattered in different directions to start their real lives. Have I got news for you, girlie? My next one is The Retreat by Sarah Pierce. They cannot wait to stay here. An angelic wilderness retreat has opened on an island off the English coast. Promising rest and relaxation, but the island itself, known more clearly as Reaper's Walk, has a dark past. Once the playground is of a serial killer, it's limited to be cursed. But they now they can't leave. A young woman is found dead below the yoga pavilion in what seems to be a tragic fall, but Detective Ellen Warren soon learns the victim wasn't a guest. She wasn't meant to be on the island at all. Creepy. I love it. Okay, this big bad boy. The not this would be so thick. Oh my god. <laughs> it is The Book of Accidents by Chuck Wendig. A new mess. Uh, long ago, Nathan lived in a house in the country with his abusive father and has never told his family what happened there. Long ago, Maddie was a little girl making dolls in her bedroom when she saw something she shouldn't have and has tried to remember the lost child by making haunting sculptures. Long ago, something sinister, something hungry, walked in the tunnels and the mountains that in the coal mines of rural Pennsylvania. Now, Nate, Matt, and Manny Graves are married and they have moved back to their hometown and their son Oliver. And now, what happened? And long ago is happening again, and is happening to Oliver. He meets a strange boy who becomes his best friend, a boy with the secrets of his own and taste of dark, dark magic. This dark magic puts them in the heart of a battle of good versus evil and a fight for the soul of the family, and perhaps for all of the world. But the Graves family has a secret weapon in his battle, the love for one another. True love will never break. <laughs> and my next one is The Lighthouse Witches by C.J. Good. I'm actually in the process of reading it. And honestly, I am confused by this book. <laughs> I don't know if it's just me, but I'm really confused about this book. And so I shall, I don't know how to explain it to you guys, in all honesty. 
Upon the claims of Willie Mark's cottage island, Lord Heron stands a lighthouse. A lighthouse that has one of all the storms. The mysterious and terrible secrets have happened on this island, instead of the witch hunt. Now, centuries later, the island is vanishing without explanation. Coincident occurs. You decide. I'm just kidding. Liv leaves the place to the island with her three daughters in search of a home. She doesn't believe in witches or dark omens or hauntings, but with the months, her daughter Luna will be the only one of them left. Twenty years later, Luna is drawn back to the place her family vanished. As her sister, last sister left, it's up to her to find out the truth. But what really happened at the lighthouse all those years ago? In my confusion, we will somehow find out. It really is confusing. <laughs> Oh my god. My next one is The Vine Witch by Luan G. Smith. Never hex a witch. For centuries, the vineyards are shut down and on on, have depended on the t talent of the vine witches whose spell helped create the world renowned vine of the Chinooks Valley. Then the skull of the vine harvest fell into ruin, where Sorcerer Elena Bonanno was blindsided by a curse. Now, after breaking the spell that confined her to the shallows of her marshland and weakened her magic, Elena is struggling to return her to her former life, and the vine she was destined to inherit is now in the possession of a handsome stranger. Because what else is new? But honestly, can we have like one average boy in a book? What is so wrong about having average looks? I'm really being honest here. Like, what is so wrong about ha having average looks in books or in real life? I don't know anymore. <laughs> My next book is The Overnight Guest by Heather Gunna. Gundena. Oh. Gunden Kau. That sounds like German, but I could be wrong. A woman receives an unexpected visitor during a deadly snowstorm. She thought she was alone. A true kind writer, really Locke, doesn't mind being snowed in at the isolated farmhouse where she retreated to write her new book. A cozy fire, complete silence, it would be perfect. If not for the fact that decades earlier at this very house, two people were murdered in cold blood and the girl disappeared without a trace. As the storm worsens, Willie finds herself trapped inside the house, haunted by the secrets contained within its walls, haunted by secrets of her own. Then she discovers a small child in the snow just outside. After bringing the child inside for warmth and safety, she begins to search for answers. But soon it becomes clear that the farmhouse isn't as isolated as she thought, and someone is willing to do anything to find them. Can we be? I told you you was a big light bulb hole. I kind of overdid it. How am I going to read it? I don't know, but those first few books that I have done at the beginning of the video, like the book of Accidental and all that, those have much later dates. And the ones that I'm reading to you now are in about next week or so. So, yeah. <laughs> But that's okay, I've, as you can tell, the lighthouse witch, I'm almost done, so, yay! I think I can renew these books for one more time, so like the this portion of the video, I should be able to renew them one more time. I guess I renewed them two times. So, yeah, we will see. My next one is Monster is Guard by Rosamund Hodge. Centuries ago, the... Heretic starts in a room and raised a deadly vial around Runeclair's palace, casting a royal family into an enchanted sleep and silencing the kingdom's gods. Born with a miraculous gift, Leah's destiny is to kill Lumen and make the royals, but she, when she succeeds, she finds her destiny not yet complete. For now, she must marry into the royal family, forge a pact with the god, or die. To make matters even worse, Lumen's spirit is haunting her. As the squad grows between the kingdom's old and new gods, the queen sends Leah and Prince Alun, her betrothed, on a pilgrim age to awaken the gods, but the old gods are more dangerous than Leah ever knew, and Ruben may offer her only hope of survival. This kind of reminds me of Sleeping Beauty, so I wonder if it's a retail or not. Alright, next one is The Garden of the Curse by Katie Rose Poole. Since fleeing the gilded halls of Ever Garden, for the muck filled canals of the marshes where Lil Briggs has made a name for herself as the best curse breaker in Kanaza City. But no matter how many cases she saw, she is still haunted by the mystery of her mother's disappearances. When Andrea's foul crest, Marlo's old crush and Sukon of one of Kanaza's most affluent spell making families, ask her to help break a left threatened curse. 
Mala wants nothing to do with the boy who was spun her a year ago, but a new lead in her mother's case makes Mala realize that the only way to get the answer she desperately seeks is to help Adrius and return to Emigard in society, even if it means suffering, through a fake love affair with him to avoid drawing suspicion from the combining five families. As the investigation draws Mala into a web of deadly secrets and powerful enemies, a shocking truth emerges. Adrius's curse and her mother's disappearance may just be clues to an even larger mystery, one that could unravel the many foundations of Karaza and magic itself. That was too loud, but that sounds absolute, absolutely divine. <laughs> or cursed. Whichever you want to see it. We're almost there, guys. <laughs> Alright, next up, bad boy. We got Kingdom of Swords, Bad and Bad On. Born to a family of powerful witch doctors, Alma yearns for magic of her own, but she fails to read the bones, fails to see the future, and fails to call upon her ancestors. With each passing year, her ambitious mother looks upon her with ever growing disapproval. There is only one thing Alma hasn't tried. Charlottes and the main mark and train years of their own lives for a taste of magic without knowing how many each rich one will take. This is a sacrifice Adam would never risk until the kingdom's children begin to vanish. When Anna trains her years for the magic to catch a child snatcher, what she uncovers is even more horrifying than Demon King, who the ancient gods imprisoned centuries ago is skirt stirring. If he awakens, he has hung up his hold and bring out his world to his knees. And then she pays for the price to put a magic to save it. Hmm? I like how my main theme is about witches. Those are them witches, man. Alright, my next one is Beyond the Black Door by A. Strickland. Karma was warned to never open the black door, but she didn't listen. And now she will pay for the price for that she did. <laughs> I'm kidding. Everybody has a soul. Ah, are you sure? Some are beautiful gardens, others like frightening dungeons. So walkers, or like Kamai and her mother, can journey into other's paper souls while they sleep. That is creepy. <laughs> but no matter where Kamai visits, she sees a black door and follows her into every soul and her mother has told her to never ever open it. When Kamai touches the door, it is warm and heart beating and like it has a pulse. When she puts her ear to it, she hears her own name whispered from the other side, and when tragedy strikes, Kamai does the unthinkable. She opens the door. <gasps> Shocking. Well, and that's basically the plot of it. <laughs> I know, that was acting dramatic. You guys want to know how much books I have for the award? These are all my library hauls. Yay! Did I overdid it? Yes, but, um... Thumbnail? I'm just kidding. I'll just take a thumbnail like this because I can't hold it anymore. But these are all my bad boys right here. This is really heavy. So those are all the books that I had got from the library. Um, I'm pretty sure I can finish them. Because technically the, some of them are due at the end of the month, some of them are due on next week. So and so forth. So I should be able to finish them off. But let me know what books you have got from the library if you had ones. And please like, comment, and subscribe so you'll be notified every time I post. And I will see you in my next one. Bye!